Hi, and welcome back to Leitrim Daily's YouTube channel. And this weekend, we face a crunch battle with Tipperary in the Division 3 of the National Football League. And of course, our footballers didn't play in down last week. Will be taken to the field this weekend in Karen Shannon. All things going well. The game, obviously, behind closed doors, but it is available on the GA Go app for five euros. We're going to be talking about all and everything to do with the National Football League and the return of inter-county football to Leitrim with their forward, Ryan O'Rourke. Ryan joins me now. Ryan, you're very welcome to the programme. Thanks very much, Bradley. Ryan, let's start maybe with the game on Sunday because obviously Tipperary, it's a crunch game. They're two points ahead of us in the league, but a win puts us in an advantageous position on the head-to-heads. Does any of that come into your consideration or are you just focusing on the game on Sunday afternoon? Yeah, listen, we're just focusing on, as you said, the game, really. Um, there's lots of different things that are thrown. They're going to be thrown up on Sunday with different... They're on about score difference, and they're on about if, if Derry, the Derry and uh, Offaly game as well. So all we can focus on is beating Tipperary, not by how much or whatever, but uh, we're just focused on winning the game. That's all That's all our concentration is this week. In terms of that score difference, I suppose, do you know, have you looked into it yourself even just to know in the back of your mind or is that something you'd want to know if you're winning uh, coming to the last five or ten minutes of the game if you're taking a, a free late on and we're a point or two shy of that on score difference will you allow that come into your game or you just forget about it completely and work about it after the game? No, we haven't even spoken about it at all. I think it's people are saying it was six points or something like that but um, no, we can't. If you start thinking of how much you're going to win by, you're you might you might end up not even winning the game, so we're just focused on winning the game, and that's 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 the only thing we're thinking of this week. We haven't spoke about it, and maybe if it comes down to the end of the game and it's tight, and maybe then we might need a bit of game management. But um, for now, we're just we're just focused on winning the game. In terms of I suppose the last seven or eight days in Leitrim football, it's been a fairly eventful week. It's all started, I suppose, last week with the late withdrawal from the game in down. What's your own thoughts on that whole situation? And, and I suppose the, the repercussions that have come out over the week. Yeah, listen, uh, this kind of been it's been mixed. Um, I suppose from my feeling of it, and it was it seemed to be everything outside of the GA, everybody outside of the GA was kind of praising us and and any teams that were feeling not particularly safe to travel or to go ahead with these games. And it seems to be any more people that were given out or kind of. Um, asking questions were kind of inside the GEA. So, um, listen, it, it's up to every team. You know, we've seen Waterford there today. I think it was they pulled out of their their clash with Antrim. So, um, you know, we were the same last week and for a number of different reasons and we couldn't field. So, uh, but we're happy to, to be able to field this weekend and uh, push on and try and win the game. Of course, there's a couple of lads from Fina on that team as well. Yourself, Jack, your own cousin, Reardon, so this panel. In terms of, I suppose, how that really impacts a community, um, without asking you really what way you fell in terms of whether you wanted to play the game or not play the game, everyone's entitled to their own opinion, and I'm not going to get into that. But in terms of the actual decision, are you happy with the decision that was made and the manner in which it was made by the lads? Yeah, I yeah, am. Listen, uh, and any decision we make as, as players and management, um, and even the county board, you know, we're going to back that decision. Um, look, it, it definitely wasn't taken lightly. Um, like you said, we were another group of fellas from FINA and our own community. So, you know, um, talking to all the like parents of the players and even people around, the, whenever you do see them, they were delighted. They, they didn't want to see us traveling at all, you know, coming back. Like, let's, for example, like we didn't even travel and I couldn't, I was, couldn't teach this week because um, obviously there was a case. So, um, you know, this is the knock-on effect it has. So um, we felt we were taking it serious, and um, we, there was a number of concerns within the camp. So we felt it was the, it was the best option. And you know, people talk about uh, the integrity of the league, but we were thinking more of the integrity of the safety of people and public health. So that's that's what we put number one. But um, we're home in Carrick and Shannon this weekend, and we know everything will be in place, and we're we we have. Uh, so far, and yeah, have a, have a decent team ready for it. So that's that's our focus now, and we're glad to do it. You mentioned the integrity of the league, and I suppose that's the phrase that was used by the Tipperary manager last weekend when he kind of, I suppose, called silly beggars on, on the behaviour of Leitrim. Obviously, you put the record straight. We've also spoken to the likes of Terry, and, and he discussed his thoughts on this as well. It's yeah. very much a case of, of a, a real cup final, a real championship final here in a league match. 
is it kind of a bit weird at this stage of the season to be playing league games for them to be so important in terms of the, the, the future of, of the team and, and the squad? We knew this was coming since last March, um, that it was probably going to come down to the wire, down to the last game. So um, obviously through the summer months, we didn't know if it was going to happen and it's happening now. So uh, we're at the very end of October and it's a must win game. So, but listen, it's great to, it's great to have that too. You know, like there's plenty of years in Leitrim where and uh, Division Four, you're at the the last couple of games could be dead rubber, and you're playing for nothing, and that's no preparation for championship. So, um, we're down to our last league game, and it's must win, and it's at home as well. It's a pity there's no supporters to back us up, but, um, yeah, it's we're we're looking forward to, it and it's definitely a, a game we think we can win. Listen, we put it out there to our listeners to ask if anyone had any questions for you, and we did get one uh, recommend or one question in that we're gonna. So actually, it's Dave McQueenie. He's a Kiltubber man, but he's currently residing in Athlone. But he goes to all the league games, home and away. And he got in touch with this question for you. Hi, Ryan. Uh, Leitrim are used to playing Division 4 football in the league. But after a good year last year, we found ourselves playing Division 3 football this year. From the outside looking in, I can see that Leitrim, I think Leitrim have played fairly well in most games. But just maybe a spell of five or ten minutes where concentration kind of wanes during the game and it tends to take the game away from us. But on the field, from a player's point of view, do you see that step up in quality and that change from playing Division 4 football to now playing Division 3 football? And do you find yourself learning from that? Do you find yourself developing uh, your own game around that and that step up in quality that you're facing? Keep up the good work. Yeah, listen, it's a good question, David. Um, it's definitely, definitely could notice the, the step up from Division 4 to Division 3. And you're right in saying that every game we played, like what, we, we won one and drew one, but he, all the games we lost, we were in all those games. Um, we played well for a lot of them games. And um, it was, like you said, five or ten minute spells here and there were, were just cost us. Um, you go through them all. I remember the, the Derry game, we should have won it. Um, what was it the Cork game? Even Cork ran away with it a while, but I remember the first the first twenty minutes of the first half, it was tit for tat, and I remember the five or five minutes before half time and five minutes after time, they just kind of took over. And it seems when these teams in Division Three do take over, they do really kind of punish you. They they do score heavily sometimes. So um, in Division Four, if a team's on top, they mightn't score as much. So that's one thing we really noticed. But um, for the majority of these games, and Offaly as well as another game at home. Um, I think they ran away with like eight points in the end, but there was another game that we could have won, really. So um, that's definitely it. When teams do get on top, they really do punish you. So it's just trying to negate that spell when they do take over, and um, you have to be. We have to be more clinical ourselves when we do get on top. So that was the main thing, I suppose, between Division Four and Division Three, and time in the ball and all that. It, the more you go up the divisions, you've less time in the ball. So uh, there are a couple of things, but we know well we can mix it. Uh, with these teams, so we're just hoping to get to get another stint in Division Three to uh, to kind of right our wrongs and uh, and stay up. In terms of the, just to follow on from the question, I suppose how important is it to Leitrim? Because we hear all this time about the championship versus the league, and sometimes we get a bad draw in the championship. People are looking forward to the game against Mayo in a couple of weeks, but we win as huge underdogs in the league. We're never that far off the standard. How important is it for us to be playing the likes of Derry and Cork and Loud and, and these teams in a stronger Division 3 than Division 4 going forward? Oh, big time. I, like, uh, I suppose over the last four years, um, when we got a good few beatings by the likes of Roscommon and these teams, um, we knew well to close that gap. We had to be playing the likes of these teams, the Derrys, the Offleys, the Corks, um, very strong opposition. But, um, you know, each time you play them, you're learning more and more um, as opposed to probably playing more the same teams over and over again for the guts of a decade in Division Four. So um playing new teams, you learn new things. Um, you know, we've a very young team. Our strength and conditioning is is improving every year. So the likes of going into championship, we're playing Mayo. So and that's that's the level we're trying to get to. And playing the, these teams in Division Three are definitely going to help us get there. There's a couple of new exciting young players coming through Leach from ranks at the moment. And I know I saw the team that was named last week, whether that would have been the team that started or not based on, on cases and stuff, we don't know. But a few interesting names that we haven't seen before on uh, a Leitrim team sheet. Donald Casey was picked at uh, full back, Brendan Flynn back in between the sticks in, in goals. 
Um, how important is it to see lads coming through with Connor Farrell back in the fold as well, having not really been involved in, in recent times? Uh, great to see. I've, I've picked three lads from Leitrim Village. That's purely circumstantial. But in <laughs> yeah. terms of the, um, I suppose, how it's gone, the those lads coming through and, and bolstering that squad a little bit. Yeah, it's great. Um, it's Our panel nearly seems entirely different since since this, uh, before the lockdown. Um, back in March, we have a lot of new blood coming through. The likes of Donald Casey there you mentioned. Um, Paul Keeney's in now after a good club championship. Um, you know, these young lads definitely do boost the thing. Um, and they're they're young, but they're 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 ready too, you know, they're they're in good shape uh, for their age. They're only 18 or 19. And um, yeah, definitely we were already a young team and you see more young lads coming in. It drives competition and training, and uh, that, that's that's what you want. In terms of youngsters coming through, even younger lads coming through, the under-17 championship, uh, we've lost it this year. It seems it's been pushed back, and whether it'll be played or not now, I suppose, is anybody's guess. How much of a, of a loss is that to Leitrim to get that next generation of lads coming through, the Paul Keeneys and, and Donald Casey's of two or three years' time, to, to give them that experience of the cut and trust of championship fair? Yeah, definitely. I know it's really disappointing for the lads. Um, I know Benny and the lads were, were training uh, hard. We used to see them a good bit up at the, the Centre of Excellence. So disappointing for them because it's a great learning curve. Um, I remember playing County Minor and I still remember some of the experiences that you that you take even to, for now uh, at senior. So um, Minor under 21 is definitely, you know, they're, they're stepping blocks towards your senior career. So they're great memories, they're big championship games, and that's ultimately what it comes down to as a senior player, how you perform in them big championship days. So uh, it's very disappointing for them. Um, hopefully they, they do end up getting their championship game anyway, um, but it's definitely disappointing because it is it is a pivotal moment, I suppose, of your career going forward. Yeah, we had Brendan Gokin lined up to come in and have a chat with us. He's, of course, the manager of that team. Now we, we didn't do go forward with the issue because no game to talk about. In terms of Sunday's game, just to finish up with the actual match itself, is this challenge within Lewis Grasp? Can we expect, can we really uh, look to a victory on Sunday within our abilities? Oh, 100%. Um, listen, Tipperary have lots of quality. Uh, Michael Quinn Levin, um, Liam Casey, Jack Kennedy, uh, Connor Sweeney, you know, they have a lot of quality there. Um, but look, we're we're at home. Um, we're hoping to to give them a right good game, and um, hopefully, we've seen a lot of the games where we, uh, especially last year, where we kept it tight for the to the last ten minutes, and we we kind of dug it out in the last few minutes. So we're hoping to be there thereabouts for the first fifty minutes and sixty minutes, and and drive it on. Then um, we definitely think we're well in our ability to beat them. Yeah. And maybe leave all the questions of the integrity of the league to one side yeah, for everybody exactly, yeah. involved on Sunday afternoon. Uh, Ryan O'Rourke, thank you so much for joining in. Thanks to David for sending in the question earlier as well. Uh, really, the be very best of luck to you and your teammates on Sunday. And here's hoping we can secure our Division 3 status. Uh, just a word, Mayo a week after, which is more important, retaining Division 3 status or the Mayo game on a championship this year? Um. Uh, listen, pr probably regaining Division Three status at, the, at this moment in time, anyway, is, is all we're focusing on. Um, definitely, yeah, I think it'll 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 be more important probably going forward for us. Okay, well, listen, Ryan. To be fair, Terry said the exact same last week. Uh, thanks very much for joining me. Best of luck on Sunday. Thanks very much, Rafi.